with my pod partner at work and ranting about people who run to the media over the smallest indignity. Fat shamed on a plane? Go to the media. Share that shameful experience. Let me understand this. Someone was humiliated in front of a plane load of strangers and they wanted to increase their humiliation by sharing their story with the media? Do they not see the irony of their situation? Because there'll be lots of asshole readers out there ready to judge your humiliation. Make sure to name check the company in the vain hope that what? They get closed down? That protesters launch a parade in your honour? Don't forget to get your picture taken so you open yourself up to even more trolling and mocking. Not to mention a little nobody like me being baffled by your actions and then vlogging about it. I don't understand these bizarre overreactions. And I'm with the shame person. I'm a former fatty. I used to hate squishing my fat butt into those plane seats stripping on the seat belt. You know what? When I was a fat passenger, had the airline asked me if I was pregnant, there is no way I am going to go to the media and share my humiliation so they can share it with the masses. And include a photo of me sitting in a cafe. You're practically asking for people to give you shit. Here's another one. Someone with an injury was rushed to a medical centre. I'm not leaning and shaming. The patient was admitted and after a six day stay and no operation, they were released due to overcrowding. Understandably frustrating and upsetting, I know, because I've experienced a similar situation myself. But the First thing this guy does is go straight to the media and name and shame the treatment provider. He tells us how he received six days professional medical care and subsequently discharged due to overcrowding. His operation was postponed to the next week as the more critical incoming patients were a moral priority. A week later he got his operation and it was all fine and dandy. But he couldn't help himself. He had to bitch out the media about his unnecessary six-day stay. Why is he judge and jury on the hospital when he doesn't have all of the facts or the background info? What do you think is going to happen when he shared his story with the media? They'd close the hospital down? Oh, maybe government agents would start prowling the hospital wards looking for anyone who did look like they were sick enough to be in the hospital. I really don't understand this need to overshare. I've had a family in a similar situation this guy. Guess where we went after this happened to us? We went home. Why am I telling you this? When I was a teenager in the 80s, we were all terrified by future technology. The big scary big brother who would know everything we did or thought or wanted. There weren't any cell phones, there was TV, newspapers and the TV news and Scary Big Brother lurked behind everything. When I turned 14 in 1984, Big Brother was everywhere because it was a movie and a book of course. But everybody feared Big Brother. It hears your thoughts, it hears your phone calls, it smells your farts, you can't be late for work or your overlords will see and they'll read your mind and banish you. Because we were all so worried about George Orwell's 1984 with Big Brother watching our every single move. Present day Big Brother is totally redundant. We have people rushing to share every humiliation or frustrating experience. We don't need to fear Big Brother. We have Big Mouthers doing all the work for him. Hashtag BB. I'm in a unique position. Being Generation X, I was brought up before the internet was a thing. I mean, it was secretly a thing, but it wasn't the thing it is now. Actually, thing is too small a word for it. Let's call it all-encompassing, get it while you want it, hate spewing, home invading, spamming, hacking, troll making, information on demand, magical nightmare that we all call the internet. I have got to laugh at Panic Big Brother watching terror from the 1980s when I was a cool ladies teen. Okay, maybe Google does have a bit of a Big Brotherish aspect to it, but nowadays Big Brother doesn't really have to try that hard to find out shit in our lives. I mean, we want people to find us. 
we want you to look at what we're wearing, look at our pictures, read our blog, watch our videos and copy what we're wearing and know exactly where we got it from. And then there's Facebook. When I was doing jewellery, I had to have a Facebook page. I didn't want to have a Facebook personal account or whatever those things are called, but I wanted Glamour Twinkles Joy as a Facebook page. You can't have one without the other. Mm. Now, when I gave up jewellery making, I decided to close my Facebook page. And that enchanting process takes two weeks. Yep, when you close your FB account, you can't touch anything on Facebook for two weeks or it will restart the shutdown process again. And that in itself is pretty creepy, but it gets worse. Now I'm not on Facebook. If any news story includes a Facebook page link, I can't open it. I can't read it. I can't see the shops. I can't see anything. Obviously most of the people around me have Facebook accounts, so I don't really miss anything out. And also Fuckbook really doesn't have any actual newsworthy items, so to speak. I mean they have the dumbass look at me keyboard warrior bullshit going on, but Sometimes I like to read that crap, you know? I'm a sucker for clickbait. This is something I know about myself. But this Facebook blocking crap, it's really Black Mirror material. You know the Black Mirror episode where the guy can't see people or only sees aesthetic blurs? That's kind of what it feels like when you're not on Fuckbook. If you're not a cool Facebook member, you don't get to see what they have. Go in on, member. You're dirty. The real scary oversharing thing that nobody wants anyone else to see? Google search history. Just think about the stuff you've randomly searched while logged on to your Gmail account. You're thinking about it now, aren't you? That shit is locked in there forever. It can't be deleted. It can't be erased. It's like your every weirdo thought is right there for anyone to see. And that, dear reader, is truly terrifying. I'm suddenly sitting here thinking about all the stuff that I've googled. I'm fascinated with serial killers, so you can just imagine the kind of stuff that I've googled. I used to work with this girl who was fascinated with plane crashes. Not in a macabre, ghoulish, weird way. She was someone like me who just found these things fascinating. She didn't want anyone to know about her nasty habit or anything that she googled, but I completely understand her concern. Your Google search history is a standalone thing that would not make for pleasant viewing. And that right there is way more scary than any Big Brother is watching me bullshit. This has been a somewhat sobering glamour from Gore's blue girl in a Big Brotherish oversharing corporate mind girlish judgy world. No one's going to judge you if you like, or comment, or subscribe on this vlog. I'm serious, I've got my own secrets to keep, so... Oh shit, I probably shouldn't have said any of that stuff. Cue the twinkle twinkle music. Twinkle, twinkle, little...